Welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. I'm John Mafrano for Boris TV, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at the 3D object extruded text. In particular, we're going to focus on the text properties, the render properties, and the extrusion properties in extruded text. We're going to create a little logo that kind of looks like wood blocks for this Western Woods company. I'm going to start by creating a new project and then I'm going to insert a video track and right after that insert an empty event. If you're familiar with After Effects at all uh, and you're used to creating a comp and then inserting a solid, an empty event in Vegas is similar to a solid in After Effects. Uh, then we will apply the Boris Continuum Complete 3D Object Extruded Text to this. You'll notice that I've arranged my BCC plugins in folders within the uh, Effects Plugin uh, Chooser. Uh, Vegas allows you to create folders and I recommend that you do categorize them uh, by the folders that they normally come in. We're going to select the BCC Extruded Text, click Add, uh, and then click OK. We could have also uh, double clicked on it. There's several ways of, of getting these applied. And this will apply Extruded Text uh, to this empty event. So the first thing we want to do is launch the text window. I'll press the Launch Text Window button and up will come the text editor. Now, if you're familiar with Boris Red or Graffiti or Blue, uh, the other Boris products, this would look familiar to you. This is where you enter in your text. So I'm going to type in Western, all in caps, because I want them to be big blocks, uh, Woodworks. Uh, and actually, um, I should have hit Enter instead of Space there, because I want them on two lines. Now, I can select any one of these, uh, a word, a character, uh, and just change uh, the font uh, on, on any one thing. Uh, whatever's selected, that's what gets changed, just like uh, if you were in a word processor. Uh, so we'll select them all and just go through uh, a couple of fonts. I'm using the down arrow here to go through them. Uh, you can also use the up and down uh, next and previous font uh, button here. And so I know that I want to use Arial Black on this because it's a nice, solid-looking font uh, that'll look like a block of wood. The next thing I want to do is pick the size, and I want to take something, uh, just something above 100 to give the uh, extruder enough information to work with. Uh, so larger fonts do work better. You can always scale them back later. Uh, and you can also use these buttons to make a font larger uh, and smaller. So that'll go up one size and down a size. As you'd expect, there are buttons for bold and italics, but things like italics don't work with fonts like Arial Blacks. It has no italics. But don't worry, Boris has you covered there because it has a style skew in the X and in the Y. And so if you skew in the X just a little, you get italic text out of any font. And you can also skew in the Y, uh, and it gives you this kind of barn door uh, swinging effect. We're not going to use either of those today because we want our blocks to look nice, like nice square chunky blocks. But I just wanted to show you uh, that that does work. The next down here is tracking, and tracking is the space between all of the letters at once. So it's just a, your general uh, spacing. We'll set that back to zero. Then you can do kerning on individual letters. So if there were letters that were too close, you would place the cursor between two letters. Let's say we thought this uh, R was too close to the N. Uh, we can take and adjust the kerning. I can do that um, by typing in this box. I can drag on this box and adjust the kerning. Um, I can drag uh, over on the slider and adjust the kerning. Uh, and I can also adjust the kerning by going through with the uh, alt arrow key uh, and adjusting each one separately. So um, however you like doing your kerning, Boris will allow you to do it. Then there is the letting. And again, I want to select both of these lines to show you uh, the letting. So let me move over here. Uh, and the letting is the space between uh, the two lines. So if we make it smaller, they'll get closer, and larger, they'll get uh, further away. Uh, letting was uh, taken right from the days of the printing press when they actually used to put lead in between the lines of text and the amount of lead they used was called the letting. So that's, that's what helps me remember it. Then there's the baseline. The baseline is what the text um, is aligned to. Usually it is at the base of the text, but you can move it up and down uh, and adjust the baseline. And then you can adjust the scale in the X and you could adjust the scale in the Y. So if you wanted really tall blocks, uh, we could make these uh, very tall blocks as well. I'm going to reset these back to their defaults, which was uh, 0, 100, and 100. The other options you have are justification. So you have less justify, uh, center justify, and right justify. 
but we're going to use something called fill justify. If you noticed uh, on my blocks in the example, the western was just as spread out as the woodwork. So by hitting the fill justify button, it makes western and woodworks uh, fill out the same amount of space, and that always looks good on logos, or mostly looks good on logos. Uh, the next tab here allows you to do word wrap. You can decide if you uh, have multiple words, you can let them wrap. And this tab here is kind of neat because it controls the fill style and the border style. Well, let me apply these so you can see how it works to begin with. I'll just apply this and uh, Boris will create the geometry. Right, so there you see I've got solid blocks. Then I'll launch my text window again. And this time I'm going to turn my border style on and I'm going to turn my fill style off and then apply again. And you'll see that it will fill in, uh, it will take the center out of these letters. And you'll just get the the border of these letters. So um, probably something strange with the W in this particular font, um, but normally uh, it would pull the middle out of all the letters. So let's go back and, uh, and change this back again. And we'll click Apply. Now the next thing I want to show you are the render settings, but before I do, I need to align this text so that you can see it a little better. So I'm going to go down to Transformations. And we're going to cover transformations in another episode, uh, but I just want to change the uh, rotation of the text slightly. Uh, and I want to uh, change the scale so we get closer to it. And I want to change the position so that I can see these, uh, just one line of text a little bit easier. It'll, it'll help me explain some of these things to you. Okay, I also want to just quickly apply a material because I want you to see uh, some of the effects that are going to happen when we play with extrusion and render. Okay, so the first one here is polygon count and polygon count determines how many polygons are used to render these letters and as you change things like the uh, extrusion and let me go change the extrusion for a moment just to just to show you. I'm going to change this to uh, convex for a moment. You'll see there is all sorts of polygons going on inside these O's. You can see the lines and the lines and the D. And so if I take the polygon count and I move it up a bit, those will start to disappear. See they're gone from the D, they're smoothed out on the O. The idea here is to work in kind of draft mode with a low polygon count and then move your polygons up as you need them to do your final render. So let me go back and uh, reset this extrusion here. But that's what the polygon count does. Anti-aliasing is for diagonal lines, so when I turn it off, you see there's lots of jaggies in these lines. And the default is, uh, is better, and that usually takes care of most of them. If you see more, there's a, one above that called good. Smooth edges will smooth the edges between the text and the background. So I don't know if you can see, right up here, the edge is maybe a little bit rough, and I click smooth edges, and it smooths it right out. Uh, transparent object, and you would probably leave these off until you're going to do your final render and then you would decide uh, the rendering options that you want to use. Transparent object is if you are going to have a partial transparency. So if you have total transparency where nothing's there, you don't need to use this. But if there's partial transparency, so you want to have something that looks like glass, where it's partially transparent, you kind of see through, it's more translucent. If you click transparent object, it'll tell the renderer to uh, work more carefully on, on those uh, areas to, to get the translucency correct. And then finally in render this enable motion blur. One of the dead giveaways of uh, CGI, computer uh, generated graphics, uh, is when you put it in motion, every frame is crystal clear. And when things move in the real world and they're photographed by a camera, there's a blur between the, the, uh, the shutter speed of the camera and, and the movement. So what the motion blur does is it creates an artificial blur based on the motion uh, that you've put these things through in uh, BCC. Uh, and it will give a slight blur you can control the shutter angle and the smoothness of that blur to give your motion a more realistic look as if it was shot with a real camera and lens. So those are the rendering properties. Now we're going to move on to extrusion. We'll talk about lighting in a, uh, in a future episode, um, but let's talk about the extrusion. I want these wood blocks to be kind of deep, and, if, and the extrusion depth is what controls that. Right now I can uh, turn it all the way off and you can see there's no extrusion at all. There's just the bevel and the front. And then as you move this up, uh, the extrusion can get deeper and deeper and deeper. And as we, uh, I'm going to move the position here uh, just a little bit so you can see a little more of the, 
there you can see the nice extrusion uh, up above here as well uh, you can see that being extruded out so I'm going to drag these out I want them to be kind of thick I think probably about a 15 and uh, one of the things you can do is just type in here uh, so I want these to be really deep blocks the next is the bevel style and this is the style that you see here this is flat uh, bevel and that's the straight bevel you can also make this a convex bevel and so it now has some nice smoothing of course you can see you might need to increase the polygon count when you're using a convex bevel uh, and then after that is the concave bevel which will uh, scoop it out if you remember your convex and concave lenses from uh, science class uh, so concave uh, kind of scoops out the bevel in there and that kind of looks nice that might be something you might want to use with uh, with wood and then there's a bunch of saved presets and the saved presets have been created um, by drawing splines and you can create these actually in After Effects with BCC but unfortunately Vegas has no way to draw a spline so you can't create these in Vegas but they do give you a pretty good set um, and I'm gonna go down with my down arrow key uh, and just go through them and you can see all the different bevels that they have in there and from my wood blocks I want to use uh, a bevel there's these three step bevels so yeah that one now oh, I think I like that one that kinda looks like uh, furniture right that looks like real real wood so I want to uh, I want to use that uh, so I think that's the one that I like uh, and then you can control the bevel amount and the bevel amount is this slider here you can see the bevel getting bigger and bigger and bigger now let me do this with a um, I want to do this with the convex because it's easier to see and you can see this just puff out Boy, these guys get like marshmallows, right? Um, but the bevel amount controls how much bevel you will have uh, on the object. And so um, I'm going to go back to my uh, three steps and, and determine how much I want. I think maybe just, maybe just a little bit more. That's good. Um, now there's this option called back bevel. So in order to show you that, I actually have to go back down to um, the transform and just rotate this around a bit. So let me rotate it now you can see the back and you can see that there's no bevels on the back and that's okay if you're gonna only have it facing one way or you want to have this up against an object you want it to be smooth but if you're going to spin it around in uh, 3d space and, and in our example we don't but if you would you will go and check on the back bevels and then it bevels the back as well And so now the blocks will be beveled on both sides let me go back and turn this around so that we can go back to our front okay the last thing to look at in extrusion is the side style uh, the straight is the default but there's a bunch of saved presets and once again these are created from splines uh, and these presets will determine how the side looks so let me go back to straight so you can look at it uh, we will go back to none and you can see sorry let's go back to straight and you can see that they're just straight across and then I go back to a save preset and uh, and I have dent I'm going to down arrow again. We have embossed, embossed two, front heavy, right? And I go through them. Another front heavy, and so you can see how these uh, how these different sides affect um, how this looks. I think we're going to keep our side straight, and that is all of the options that are in extrusion. So let's go back down and do one last thing, and uh, that is I want to change this default gray to a nice wood texture so I can get my uh, my wood here and there's my wood texture uh, and then I want to finally back this off with the uh, transform scale it down so you can see here's our western woodworks uh, and in another tutorial I will show you how to uh, animate it like you did in the opening sequence so we've covered extruded text uh, we've looked at the text font properties, the render properties, and the extrusion properties. Hopefully this gave you a good overview of how to get started. And in future episodes, we'll take a look at materials and lighting and cameras. Until next time, this is John Refrano for Boris TV. Thanks for watching.